Good day and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name's Kyle and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in just five minutes a day. In today's video, we will be discussing how atmospheric conditions affect aircraft performance. Information for today's video was gathered from the PHAC Chapter 11, Aircraft Performance, and from the FAA Safety Team's document on density altitude which is linked in the description. In this video, we will focus on performance factors. We will not discuss how to calculate density altitude. That is discussed at length in another video linked in the description. You may have guessed by that introduction that the main atmospheric factor affecting aircraft performance is density altitude, defined as pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. There are a few factors affecting density altitude. They are altitude, temperature, and humidity. Density altitude increases with any increase in altitude, temperature, or humidity. Just remember, high, hot, and humid. Now this always goes against intuition at first, but as density altitude increases, the density of the air decreases. As shown, at a higher altitude, temperature, or humidity level, we expect to find less dense air. It is very important to remember that density moves inversely to these values. This is worth summing up and repeating. As density altitude increases, the density of the air decreases. The inverse is also true. Density altitude is an important indicator of aircraft performance. Think of density altitude as the altitude that your aircraft thinks it is performing at. If density altitude is 5,000, then your aircraft will perform as though it's at 5,000 feet MSL. If it's 9,000, it'll feel like it's performing up there, and so on. Watch out when operating at extremely high density altitudes. As a general rule, we can say that any increase in density altitude comes with a decrease in normally aspirated aircraft performance. This is because at a higher density altitude, there are proportionately less air molecules for our airfoils and induction systems to interact with. As a result, higher density altitude results in less lift being generated by the wings, less thrust being generated by the propeller, and less airflow to the engine. This is why we lean the mixture as we climb. All this being said, an aircraft at 5,000 feet density altitude would perform much better than it would at 9,000 feet density altitude. Moving forward, we will discuss the effects of density altitude on takeoff, landing, and cruise performance. Beginning with the takeoff phase of flight, density altitude has a two-fold effect on performance. An increase in density altitude will increase the required takeoff speed while subsequently decreasing engine performance. This combination of effects will increase the required takeoff distance. Humidity tends not to be factored into aircraft takeoff distance charts. It is recommended to increase takeoff distances by 10% in high humidity environments according to the FAA safety team. Up next is landing distance. An increase in density altitude will result in a higher required landing speed coupled with less friction to slow the aircraft down. This combination increases the landing distance. However, the landing ground roll should remain relatively unchanged by fluctuations in density altitude. The reason ground roll distance for takeoff increases significantly with density altitude and landing ground roll distance does not is because takeoff ground roll distance is dependent primarily upon lift generation, while the ground roll during landing is dependent upon braking action, which should remain mostly unaffected by density altitude. Moving on to cruise. Cruise true airspeed may end up slightly higher at a higher density altitude. Because the air molecules at a higher density altitude are more spread out than they are at a lower altitude, an aircraft at a higher density altitude will have to move faster than an aircraft at a lower density altitude to impact the same number of air molecules with the pitot ram hole. This means that, to display the same indicated airspeed, an aircraft at a higher density altitude must travel at a higher true airspeed than the aircraft at a lower density altitude. So inadvertently, our cruise speed will most likely end up a little higher unless we are already at maximum power. As for range, or the distance an aircraft can fly limited by fuel capacity, an aircraft equipped with a reciprocating engine will experience very little, if any, variation in range from the surface up to its altitude performance ceiling. The fuel consumption requirements do not change very much with altitude, below the maximum cruise power ratings of the engine. And I hope that none of you would feel comfortable running above the maximum cruise power rating long enough to burn through two full fuel tanks. The other atmospheric factors worth mentioning are turbulence, ice, and winds. Turbulence will typically lead to a less comfortable ride 
but should not alter performance too much. We discuss ice in great detail in our video over the subject. For the purpose of this video, just keep in mind that a flight with no icing is good, a flight with icing, bad. As ice coats the aircraft, it increases weight while subsequently reducing the effectiveness of airfoils, which translates to reduced lift and thrust. All of this is bad. Additionally, the chances of airflow separation increase, possibly resulting in a stall. Finally, induction icing may also lead to further loss of thrust or even engine failure. Avoid ice. Winds are also discussed in great detail in our video over the subject. For the purpose of this video, headwinds retard the aircraft's forward motion, resulting in shorter takeoff distances, shorter landing distances, and lower ground speed during cruise. Tailwinds do the opposite, carrying the aircraft more rapidly through the atmosphere. This increases takeoff distance and landing distances, as well as cruise ground speed. Headwinds make us slow, tailwinds make us fast, and crosswinds make us sweaty. This concludes today's video covering the effects of atmospheric conditions on aircraft performance. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.